Welcome to the web tutorial, Introduction to the National Health and Aging Trends Study, or NHATS. First, let's go over what you can expect to learn. We'll start with some background on NHATS, followed by a description of the NHATS conceptual framework, the study design, and a brief overview of content areas covered in NHATS. Let's start with some background about NHATS. The population worldwide is aging. The U.S. Census Bureau projects that older adults will outnumber children by 2035. The risks of disability increase substantially with age. In the U.S., the large baby boom cohorts born between 1946 and 1964 are now beginning to reach ages when risks of disability are substantial. To foster research that will guide efforts to reduce disability and enhance quality of life at older ages, the National Institute on Aging initiated NHATS in 2008. The vision for NHATS is to serve as a platform to guide efforts to reduce disability, maximize health and independent functioning, and enhance quality of life of older Americans. To support study of population level disability trends and individual level dynamics in older people, and to create the data infrastructure to enable study of disablement at older ages and its consequences. The study is led by investigators at the Johns Hopkins Bloomberg School of Public Health and the University of Michigan's Institute for Social Research, with data collection by Westat. NHATS has been developed with substantial input from the scientific community through its interdisciplinary investigator team and multiple advisory groups. Development of disability-related content for NHATS was guided by a conceptual framework developed for the study. The NHATS framework blends the language of the World Health Organization's International Classification of Functioning with the NAGI model of disablement. Here, the word capacity refers to an individual's physiological, cognitive, and sensory capabilities to carry out basic tasks in a controlled environment. The framework also recognizes that individuals accommodate or change their behavior in response to changes in capacity, such as doing an activity less frequently, using assistive devices, or getting help from other persons. This in turn influences an older adult's ability to carry out self-care and domestic activities and the extent of participation in productive, generative, community, social, and civic life. The framework also recognizes that the environment can influence the entire disablement process. Next, let's take a closer look at the NHATS study design. The NHAT study population represents Medicare beneficiaries ages 65 and older living in the contiguous United States. NHATS uses a stratified three-stage sample design and oversamples persons at older ages and black individuals. The initial cohort was interviewed in 2011. The sample is replenished periodically to maintain its ability to represent the older Medicare population. NHATS interviews participants annually in their homes. The primary data collection instrument is the sample person, or SP, interview. Most sample persons respond to the SP interview for themselves. A proxy who is familiar with the sampled person's routine, typically a family member, is interviewed in instances where the sample person cannot respond on their own. As part of the SP interview, an activity booklet is used to record the results of the physical performance activities. The facilities questionnaire, or FQ, is administered to a staff person when a sample person resides in a residential care setting, including a nursing home. The FQ collects information on type of facility and levels of care available, the service package where the SP lives, and sources of payment for SP's care. When a sample person is deceased, the last month of life, or the LML interview, is administered to a proxy respondent, typically a close family member. Data collection is designed to be as consistent as possible across different settings and across rounds. Sample persons living in community settings are administered the sample person interview in the initial round and in follow-up rounds. For sample persons who die between rounds, a last month of life interview is conducted with a proxy respondent, usually a family member. Sample persons living in residential care settings other than nursing homes are administered the sample person interview in initial and follow-up rounds and are also eligible for the last month of life interview. In addition, a facilities questionnaire interview is conducted at each round. Sample persons living in a nursing home in their initial round 
do not complete a sample person interview and are not eligible for a sample person interview and follow-up rounds. They are, however, eligible for the last month of life interview and a facilities questionnaire interview, which is conducted at each round. The unweighted response rate is 71% for round one, the initial round, and 77% in round five, the replenishment year. Conditional response rates for other rounds range from 86% to 95%. Response rates are similar for living sample persons and last month of life interviews. For more recent waves, response rates are available in the NHATS User's Guide. Next, let's take a closer look at the content in the NHATS interviews. The content areas in NHATS flow directly from its conceptual framework and include a section on health conditions, which ask about common diagnoses, hospital stays, and surgeries, and common clinical concerns, the impairments and symptoms section, which asks about impairments in several body systems, pain and fatigue, and sensory impairments, physical capacity, which is measured with both performance-based and self-reported items, cognitive capacity, which is measured with a series of activities related to memory, orientation, and executive function, Proxy respondents complete an informant screener for dementia. For self-care and mobility activities, respondents are asked whether in the last month they used specific assistive devices while doing a particular activity, whether they had difficulty doing the activity by themselves when using the named device, frequencies compared with a year ago, and whether they received help. For household and medical activities, respondents are asked how the activity was carried out in the last month and frequency compared with a year ago. If someone else was involved, whether help was received for health and functioning reasons is assessed. For social and productive activities, respondents are asked whether they participated in the last month, whether their health or functioning limited their participation, and how important it was to be able to participate. NHATS also collects data about the environments in which older adults live, including the physical, social, technological, and service environments. Other content areas include transportation, rehabilitation, household and family members, and members of the social network, subjective and economic well-being, and details about helpers and others shown here. Dried blood spots were collected in 2018, and four assays have been released. In most years, Brief modules proposed by external investigators are included for a subset of participants. Geographic data and linked Medicare data are also available to qualified users upon completion of a data use application. Periodically, NHATS conducts the National Study of Caregiving, or NSOC. NSOC is a nationally representative study of family and other unpaid caregivers to older persons living with limitations in daily activities. A separate tutorial presents details about NSOC. This tutorial was produced by Men Yao Hu, Sarah Patterson, and Vicki Friedman with funding from the National Institute on Aging. This ends the introduction to the National Health and Aging Trends Study. Comments and questions may be sent to nhatsdata at westat.com.